Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today. And those of you who follow me on Instagram know that I am a huge football fan. In fact, the reason my husband's nickname is The Coach is because he is actually a football coach here in Texas. So most of the stadiums in my area have at this point adopted a clear bag policy. You can't take any larger size bags into the stadium unless it is clear vinyl. So that is today's project. I'm going to show you how to make a clear vinyl tote. You can use trim that is in your school colors to personalize it for your team. And then you can use it to carry your pom-poms and your number one fingers and whatever else you're carrying into the game that needs to be in your clear tote. Let's talk supplies. So first you need to determine what size bag you want to make. I am making a bag that's going to be 12 inches by 12 inches by 6 inches deep and I chose those measurements because most of the stadiums I've been to that have measurements for their clear bags have that as the largest size that you're allowed to bring in. So you might want to double check your particular stadium before you go with these dimensions and then what you want to do is cut a front and a back that is the dimensions that you want your bag to be um, width wise and height wise. So this is a 12 by 12 inch square and I've cut two of these. Then you're going to cut one piece that's going to go around the sides and the bottom. So I've got a piece here that is 6 inches by 37 inches. The way you determine the length of this is you're going to go one side, this is 12, add the next side so I get to 24 and add the last side so I get to 36. Then add an inch to that. It just gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that when we sew this together, what we'll do is we'll get this all pinned in place and then we'll cut it off even at the top and that extra inch will end up going away. I also have some bag handles that I've made for myself or I'm going to be making. All I've done so far is I cut a four inch wide by 24 inch long strip of fabric. And then what I do, you're going to press this in half like that and then you're going to press the two raw edges in towards that crease line that you made. I added a strip of fusible interfacing on one of these sides here and then that gets sandwiched in the middle. I'm going to be sewing these closed to make the bag handles. Finally, you're going to need um, a little over three yards of bias tape. You'll need more of this if you make your bag bigger. You'll need less of it if you make your bag smaller. So um, I went ahead and I made my own bias tape because that way I could match my handles, but you can use pre-purchased bias tape as well. I'm not going to show how to make the bias tape. I am instead going to put a video link below for a different video that's just all about how to do this. Finally, I have wonder clips here that I'm going to use instead of pins. You don't want to pin vinyl because the holes will remain in the vinyl. So these clips are handy to hold pieces together without punching holes in them. To assemble the bag, I'm going to start with one of my front or back sides. They're interchangeable. But I'm going to start with one of my squares and then my long piece. And I want to start by just kind of putting these vinyl pieces together. So I'm going to line up top corners there and you'll find that the vinyl kind of sticks to you know, um, itself so the two layers tend to want to stick together so you have to like separate them um, to get the edges lined up. So in order to do this you're going to want to do like a 45 degree fold. Take the edge, fold that edge so that it meets and it goes in a 45 degree angle and then Fold this edge. This is exactly how we're going to be folding the bias tape as well. This way you know that you do not have extra bulk in the corner and you can go ahead and you can clip the next corner with your wonder clip. Okay, so over here we're going to do the same thing. Fold it that way just to mark my corner. So I've got 45 degrees and then I can go up with this. You'll see now why I've allowed that inch of extra vinyl to work with 
so that we can get around these corners. Now I'm not going to stitch this yet. What I am going to do, like I said, get those vinyl pieces lined up. Go as far into that corner as I can. Okay, I don't want to stitch directly like vinyl to vinyl whenever I can avoid it. When you have just vinyl on top and just vinyl on bottom, this is when your machine can tend to get hung up on the vinyl, and so I try to avoid that. And by the way, I'm gonna have another video linked below all about tips for working with vinyl. So I'll throw some in as we're working, but that one will have some very specific ones. You may wanna watch that before you do this project. One of those tips is that you don't want to have just vinyl to vinyl sewing. So what I'm gonna do is this is where I'm gonna use my bias tape. And I'm gonna actually sew the first layer of bias tape at the same time as the vinyl. So I'm gonna pin my bias tape here and I want all the raw edges to match up. And I'm gonna be stitching right in that crease line, that first crease line there. So this time you can use more clips to hold the bias tape in place and then just pin it around the edges. At the bottom corner edges, you're going to want to do just like we did with the vinyl where you're gonna fold it a 45 degree angle and then fold it back so that those raw edges are even. Okay, once you have your bias tape pinned around, you can go ahead and cut it off at the top edge and set aside for the next side. We are now going to go ahead and stitch all the way around. As I take this to the machine, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lengthen my stitch length. This is gonna result in fewer holes punched through the vinyl, which will make a sturdier seam. So I, instead of using the standard 2.5 millimeter stitch that my machine defaults to, I'm gonna change this to a four millimeter stitch. And while the vinyl tends to feed pretty well through the feed dogs, it does tend to stick against the bed of the machine. So I do kind of lift it up as I'm stitching so that it's not sticking. corner you want to stitch down to within half an inch of the corner and then back stitch. Basically you're trying to get to where that 45 degree angle fold happened. Then go ahead and cut your thread there and you want to fold the bulk of your vinyl out of the way and then start on the next corner half inch away and start with a back stitch. And trim your bias tape even with the edge and you can see how our bag is starting to take shape. Now what I want to do is I want to wrap my bias tape around these edges here so that I can stitch it again and I'm going to fully enclose this seam. If you have any loose threads on the corners you want to go ahead and cut those off. I also like to, at this point, go ahead and clip across the corner to get some of that extra vinyl out of the way there. Okay, and then you're just gonna pull your bias tape around to the front side, sandwiching those corners in and clipping the bias tape down. And I like to do all the straight edges before I deal with the corners. Now that I have the straight edges um, clipped in place, let's take a look at this corner. 
Now you can see that I've got that extra in the corner the way that I folded it. So all I have to do now to finish this corner is roll that in at the 45 degree angle, cut off this extra thread that has appeared, roll that in, and you can see I'll have a nice 45 degree finish around that corner. Right here, it looks like the vinyl kind of got over just a little bit and I'm having trouble folding the bias tape around it. So I'm gonna trim some of that vinyl seam allowance. Okay, and then same thing on this corner where I am folding, pushing that out and then getting it to that 45 degree angle. There we go. Now all I need to do is stitch around the sides to finish that bias tape and this seam. I'm going to be moving my needle over to the leftmost position to stitch this down. At the corner, I'm going to stitch all the way to that fold. I'm going to stop with my needle down, pick up my presser foot, fold that bulk out of the way, and since this isn't sitting level, I'm actually going to use my J foot option, my self leveling option. I will link to a different video that shows how to use this in case you're interested in that. I'm going to continue sewing around the corner. Okay, here is what this side of the bag looks like, and you can see it's sewn on both sides. And when we open it, you can also see the sides of the bag. So what I need to do next is I need to repeat this process with the other side. Once you have the sides kind of tacked in place, then go ahead and go around with your bias tape again. And a tip I forgot earlier, um, your bias tape has, do we see how this one edge is a little bit, sh tiny, tiny bit shorter than the other edge? You wanna make sure it's the short edge that you are starting with and you're sewing in that shorter edge crease. That will make it easier to wrap the bias tape around on the following step. Okay, take this back to the machine. We're going to stitch this on exactly the same way as we did the first side. Now here is the only difference sewing on this side. When you're doing the second pass of stitches and you get to the corner, the folding is going to be a little different. Because this time the folding is on the top side instead of down on the bottom, You cannot stop with the needle down. You're going to have to lift the needle, lift everything, refold, and turn to continue. Okay, y'all, here is what my bag looks like when I have finished those sides. So now what I want to do is trim off any extra threads from the top, and if the top ends of your bags didn't end up even, this is where you would trim them. And then we want to finish off the raw edges of the bias tape and the raw edges of the vinyl on top with a little more bias tape. So we're going to use the remainder of the bias tape here, and I like to press these out towards the side seams. So I'm going to start close to a side seam. I'm going to get my bias tape in place and I'm going to press this seam towards the side. I'm going to do the same thing on this edge. I'm going to push the seam towards the side. Okay, and I'm going to come back around to where I started 
attaching these two. And what I want to do is I'm going to take my beginning edge and I'm going to fold it. And then I'm just going to take my bias tape and overlap right over that. Just like that. Now I'm going to sew around the bag. If your machine has a um, free arm where you can, like on mine, I can take this piece off and then I can stick things under the arm of the sewing machine. If you have that option, use it. If not, you'll just have to go slowly and stop to adjust to make sure you're not sewing the other edge of the bag. And again, I'm still using that four millimeter stitch. is what our bag currently looks like and we just need to finish off this top edge by folding the bias tape around to the other side. And right here where we overlapped you'll see I've got now a folded edge and I just want to keep that folded as it's wrapped around so that there we go. So that we don't have a raw exposed edge. It'll just be this folded edge stitched into place. Okay, because of the bag like basically being constructed and the fact that I don't want to turn it inside out, I'm going to top stitch this on instead of um, stitching from the other side like I've done on the other seams. And I want to make sure that I'm starting where that fold was. Okay, setting aside the bag for now, we're going to work on the handles. So as I said earlier, the handles are a four inch wide strip of fabric that is folded in half and then folded in half again. And at this stage, I added um, fusible interfacing to one side and then fold in half one more time so that everything is sandwiched inside. I'm gonna top stitch along this edge to keep everything closed. And then just to make it match, I'll top stitch down the other folded edge as well. I am going to move my sewing needle to the furthest right position to do this. And just because it's easier, I'll just stitch across the bottom and back down the other side. And then I will be repeating that with the other strap. Okay, I am going to take the bag and I've got a washable marker here. I'm going to fold this down as flat as I can to work with it. And I'm going to measure in one and a half inches from each edge and I'm going to make a mark. And that is where I'm going to want to put the outer edges of my handles. So what I'm going to do with the handle is fold under that raw edge and I'm going to put it on my bag. I want the outer edge to be where my mark was and I'm just going to add a couple of little clips to hold it in place. Do the same thing, let me trim those threads. I'm going to do the same thing on the other edge. I'm folding it under approximately half an inch. and measure to make sure you're putting the same amount of strap down on each side. So this is an inch and a half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, that one's, okay, it came unfolded. So I want it to stay folded. Maybe I'll just add a clip like that to keep it folded. So that is only going to be an inch down. 
And honestly, it doesn't matter how far down you put it, at least an inch. But um, that is personal preference. Just make sure it's the same on both sides. So how I'm going to sew this, I'm going to sew a little box with an X through it and take it to the machine to do that. I'm going to use my free arm again because it's just easier to get in there. something directional like this, instead of trying to turn the corner again, it's easier to just backstitch where you want this to be. Again, it's easier to leave the needle down and backstitch to where I want to go to get to this other corner. And reinforcing stitching on something like stitching on a handle is not going to hurt. Okay, you can see how I have stitched the handle on in a box with an X in it. I'm going to trim off these extra little threads. And then I'm just going to repeat this process on the other side of the handle and on the other side of the bag. When you get to the other side of the bag, make sure you measure carefully and match up your handles so that they are the same length. And then that's it. I'll show you what this looks like when I finish putting the handles on. Okay y'all, I've gotten all those straps sewn on and here is my completed bag. All that's left to do is fill it with all my goodies to take to the football game.